Hi, hi, it's Joy Foster, founder of Tech Mixies and the host of Sparkle and Thrive podcast. And we are joined today by Ruby, Ooh. one of our favorite Tech Mixies. And I don't want to get your last name wrong, so I'll let you pronounce it correctly for me. It's Rubina Shake. Rubina Shake. I know, sorry, I call <laughs> you. We'll go back to Rubina for, <laughs> for our professional. Ruby is fine. Ruby is yeah. fine. Well, Ruby. You have been in the Tech Pixies world for a while now. Yes. Do you remember when you started at Tech Pixies? Yes. Uh, about uh, a year and a little bit. And yeah. when I joined, I wasn't sure what I wanted to achieve from it. Um, and I could see the community talking to each other and didn't quite understand the feeling within the community. But now that I've been in it for, for a year or so, I just will always remain in it because it's done so much for me personally. Well, let's talk about that. You had a job when you came into Tech Pixies, but you knew that that job was going to come to an end and you part of your trying to figure out what you're going to do next was, do I get another job? Do I start a business? And you really explored all of it, didn't you? Yes. Yes. So I felt one of the most important things was to try and figure out what I could do, what my strengths were, my skills, and then also what it was that I would really love to do. So my area of interest and by honing, it, honing in on those two things, I was able to, um, with the Tech Pixie coaches, update my LinkedIn profile, which um, the language on LinkedIn had always been very corporate and I'd never worked in corporate. And that wasn't me. And I was just able to become myself a lot more on my profile. We spend a lot of time at Tech Pixies focusing on your value set and the question, what would I love? And these are things that you really had to explore and, and chose to explore. I mean, what I love about you is you, you, you got stuck in, you did the work, you were open-minded, you, 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 know, you, you explored the opportunities that were there for you. So tell me about some of the, or tell, tell our listeners, the people who are watching, uh, as well as me, about some of the things you, you explored en route to your dream job. So it was ma mainly what, what it is I could do. So I am great at getting jobs done. So things that other people aren't so, not so interested in, but rather somebody else did, I can do and I can get to where we need to be in the business. And that's what I do. So I like being in the backstage and letting somebody else be the star. That's that's what I do best. What I would love, Nick and I, that's my husband, we share a love of natural history. And that's what we love doing. We love being outdoors, countryside, coast, even in our back garden. And that's what I really wanted to get into or thought I wanted to, but as as our talks developed with within Tech Pixies, I could see I could open that out to something wider. And so I pursued that also. So it was an option that I hadn't really thought about up to that point. And we we talk a lot about, you know, do it takes the action steps towards things and mm -hmm. try things out. And and you did a lot of that. Um, because you love na na the the natural environment, and yes, yes. You, so talk about some of the things that you tried out to see if that was something you could pursue and explore. Um, so I did a lot of uh, voluntary work. I uh, was doing ecological surveys, um, also social media for the local archaeological trust, just to try and get a feel for what it was. I might be able to do. Um, and as I went through this process, I became more and more interested in uh, sustainable farming and the fact that we need to preserve our soil, air and water, as well as the biodiversity. So I was able to hone in on that, even though um, it's not something that I had working experience of. So that's what I did. 
I love that. There's so much about that that I love because we, you know, a lot of times when people don't know exactly what they're going to do next, it's really this period of exploration. And yes. as you're exploring, you're learning, you're learning and, and exploring and learning and exploring, and then they feed into each other. And then you think, okay, well, I really enjoy this or I don't really enjoy that. And um, one of the things that we, we have as a tool in the program is the Brave Thinking Activation Tool, which I know I've done with you a couple times. Yes. You know, where yes. it's like, okay, what are the 20 different things that I could do for a job? And then we narrow it down to five and then uh, you know sort them, the top three that you'd be interested in. And then you yeah. spend yeah. time, schedule time on your calendar to serve those three ideas and just mm -hmm. see what comes up. And you've done that a couple times. And I think that that, has really served you well. Now, it was not necessarily for a period of time, it was not easy getting your dream job. Let's talk about some of the challenges that you faced as you realized this is what I want to do. And then you started to go for those types of jobs. Uh, so probably the key is that I had no experience in that sector, which is why I honed in on what it was I could offer. And I think with many of us, we have the fears of, oh, I'm a woman, I'm older. And for me, I'm not white. I mean, as soon as you see my name, you can see that I'm not white. And I know that where, where there is AI sorting, sometimes it can be skewed and foreign names are uh, filtered out before they get any further. So I was aware of all of that, but having that thought wasn't going to help, was it? I had to just keep, I had to be proactive and just keep going for um, the roles that I wanted. What I did is I went for roles in the sectors that I wanted and my position maybe i was i was applying for lower ranked roles just so i could get into the sector but as it happened my dream job was exactly in the right level for me so it, it just has worked out so well well let's talk about the dream job because this <laughs> has been with at tactics we talk a lot about holding space you know like i have this vision I have, it's and we always say it comes, you know, it comes from us. It's a, it's inside us. We and if we can tap into it, we start to, you know, we can start to lean into taking action towards it. Which you did all of those things, but there's a point while you're, well, it's sort of all coming together that it doesn't feel like sometimes it's going to work out. Yes, and we yes. talk about holding space and just trusting that, trusting the process and trusting that it's all going to work out. We don't know how, but we know the how is known. And we take action steps in faith that this thing that we would love is going to come together. So, yeah, let's talk about the dream job because the dream job did come around after a period of time that felt like, oh, this isn't happening. What's going on? In fact, I, you know, I think one of the things as I was watching you go through this, you know, I was holding space that it would all work out, of course. Um, but I was like, what can I do <laughs> with what I have to help you? And that's when I did a couple um, key interviews with women in, in our community or women we're connected to about, you know, okay, if I'm a woman from an ethnically diverse background, uh, what are some top tips? And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if you got a chance to listen to those or not, but I, I felt like I was creating them with, uh, with you and also other people in our community in mind who have been saying to me like, okay, Joy, it's, you know, it's one thing to try and get a job if you're a white woman versus a white man, but it's another thing to try and get a job when, when you come from an ethnically diverse background. So I, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's incredibly important to um, have those tips and tricks and figure out how to keep going forward. And like you said, I can't focus on that. If I focus on that, I'm, I'm not gonna make the progress I wanna make. So you made the progress you wanna make, the, that you held that space that it was all gonna work out. And so tell us about the dream job. So the dream job, is with a company that champions um, women olive growers who farm in a sustainable manner. And we will be importing their olive oil and boosting their profiles. And I'm that so, so looking cool. forward to that. There's so much about that too, because female empowerment is one of your values mm -hmm. and things that you care, you know, sustainability sustainable farming yeah. yeah 
I just wanted to say about my vision statement because I had been working on it with you and others for so long, but I did have the benefit of knowing that my current role was going to end so I could plan what I was doing. So it was probably, it probably evolved over a period of about um, nine months where it was chopped and changed and it, it really was an evolution. Um, and I thank my accountability partner because she helped me so much. And again, being part of the Tech Pixie community, if, if I wasn't in that community, I just wouldn't have done that sort of work. It wouldn't have come into my head that this is achievable. Now, the thing that I love about your vision statement though is it's the exact same, like you told me, <laughs> you were like the job you got is exactly what you wrote in your vision statement. Yes, exactly the same. Everything in it and um, I'm away from home at the moment, so I haven't got my vision statement to hand because I would love to read it out because everything that I had envisioned is in it. That and it's just cool. incredible that by holding that dream, that thought, and having others support me in that has made it happen. Mm. I, I so want other women to see how that it is possible to have what it is you really, really want. And I consider myself just so, I am just so grateful for everything that has led up to that point. And I know that the, the person I'm going to work with, she's going to be amazing. <laughs> I just know it. Well, of course she is, because she hired you. <laughs> <laughs> An amazing person would hire you. Um, <laughs> But, you know, and, and we, we do vision statements all the time with Tech Pixies, and also we encourage you to listen to them on a regular basis. When we first started Tech Pixies, we would do, uh, we did this um, uh, exercise where you go and you meet your future self 10 years from now, and she tells you something, and she gives you a present and a gift, and you create a vision board. So we did that for a very long time. And you can still go onto YouTube and search um, Tech Pixies Life Coaching Toolkit, and you'll get that exercise, and you can do that for yourself. We also, we've evolved that though, uh, to um, that we have a vision workshop that we do once a month where we really help you. And people come back and do it again and again and again mm -hmm. and just keep honing that vision because it's not something you do once and you leave it. It's something you create and and actually you sort of try it on. And then it's like, well, that, you know, like you said, you, tw you tweak it and you yes, take things yes. out and you add things. And it's literally like putting some putting an outfit on. <laughs> like, I don't really like that outfit. I'm going to put on this outfit. And um, but there's a key word that you said, you know, grateful. So it's, so the way that we guide people through creating a vision statement is I'm so happy and grateful now that, and you know, you imagine yourself three years from now, 2025, mm -hmm. I'm so happy and grateful now that, uh, you know, all these things have happened in my life, but it's not, these things are going to happen. It's these things have already happened, you know, and, yes, yes. and then at the end saying this or something greater still, you know, there's the, leaving the, the possibility open that if the thing doesn't work out, that you want to work out that actually there's something greater out there yeah, and i yeah. do i want to reflect on that because we had we had to i you know sort of kind of i was reminding you of that along the way you know I, you might have gone for a job and it, it didn't work out the way that you mm -hmm. wanted it to do and it's like well this is something greater still it means this wasn't the best thing yet and if you look back at the the jobs that you went for that didn't quite you know that you didn't get all the way across the finish line on and the one that you ended up with is that a true statement that that was still something greater and you needed yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the time it wasn't right? Definitely. Yeah, that is yeah. exactly what happened. And I kept telling myself when I didn't get the, a particular role that, that there was something greater still. And I think I remember I had in one week, I had three rejections all yeah. in one week. And I thought, right, I've fallen off the horse, but I have so got to get back on and ride it. Yeah, but and that 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 was again another um, a, a important point in my path was getting back on the horse and knowing that there was something even greater still out there. Mm. Oh my yeah. gosh, I love that so much, and I just you know these are concepts that we talk about because we sort of know them and we've lived them. 
But for some people, when they're listening to this, they're like, oh, that's a bit woo-woo, it's a bit out yes, there. Yes. Um, and it can be. So what do you say to the person that's like, I, I'm not sure about all this, you know, vision vision work and this or something greater still and follow the process? What well, would you say well, to them? Well, I, I was exactly like that when I joined Tech Pixies, which is what I said about, you know, the community. And I didn't quite understand what it was about. And then as we developed um, with the life coaching and the neuro coaching, I found it it just all fell into place. Now, I come from a scientific background. I am very much science-based and logic and analytics and that kind of thing. But for me, this has been transformative. (laughs) That's easy for me to say. But it's just incredible what can be done. Even all you just have to do is open your mind a little. Mm, when we and we start we massage opening the mind I was saying to someone it's like putty putty, you know and when you first start with putty it's really hard and cold Mm -hmm. and then you start molding it and it starts getting more flexible and I was talking about that in the in the boot camp that we just ran this sort of we start with we start with really simple things like instead of saying I can't um I can't get I can't get my dream job you would say I I can't get my dream job yet or I haven't found my dream job yet or Instead of saying I'm too old, you'd say I'm um, I'm not too old yet. Um, and we take the automatic negative thoughts, the limiting beliefs we have, and try and reframe them with the word yet. Because mm-hmm. if we can do that, that's that's the part of that's the little tiny massaging, like opening up the mind to the possibility of you know I'm not too old yet. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, then what's the subconscious going to do? It's going to start try it's gonna it's gonna it's, it's not gonna stop you from doing something that you think you're too old for once it starts going well I'm not too old yet so the the power of the word yet is really important and we talk about that a lot in the boot camp we also talk about taking off your invisibility cloak and uh-huh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh I you know I you um you came you joined the program and you like you said you weren't sure what it was all about but you 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 wanted to to explore it Mm-hmm. how how long and it, you know and I, I don't mean to this is just really to make someone else feel very comfortable mm-hmm. how long so I don't mean to make you feel uncomfortable no, but how no, long no. were you sort of invisible even in the community with your videos on zoom and everything else yes so it probably was about six months maybe before I even turned my camera on so even within the community when we met on Zoom, I didn't have my camera on for months and months and months. And it was fine, but I did get to the point where I did want my camera on because I wanted to, I wanted other people in the safe space um, to see me and know who I am. And uh, yes, so, so that was a big step for me. And I, I actually remember having a call with you and it was, I think it was just the two of us and you had to, you know, you, you were on camera and you said, this is one of the first times I've really done this. And I, you were so proud of yourself and I was so proud of you. And now you're like, you're always there, gorgeous smile, like welcoming everybody else, you know, really connected in. I just love that about you. Thank you. And, and, and what I love also is that you wanted to take it off. You got to a point where you're like, right, I want to take mm-hmm. off the invisibility cloak. I want to show up. I want to be there fully and so um that's really cool as well it didn't it wasn't something you forced yourself to do it was like when you were ready you did it yeah and 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 that means that anybody who joins our community can have that safe space and um I am still I've still got my invisibility cloak on quite a lot of the time so it's it's still hanging on the back of my chair and I pull it over quite often um but not in our community now i feel i feel really really safe there well and you're taking it off right now to do this podcast which i'm so (laughs) grateful for so um yeah i mean a lot of times when someone is uh talking about a program they're like okay we have these modules and we have these lessons and we have all these support documents Mm -hmm. and we have all these how-to videos and we do have all of that at the tech pixies community at at the tech pixies but for you, you know, what would you say was really the game changer for you by being? Yeah. 
game changer was definitely the uh, safety of the community uh, and the neuro coaching and life coaching, but particularly the neuro coaching, because I don't think that is offered anywhere else. And that is an absolutely mind blowing tool. Um, and it's certainly, I know, I know it's, there's only a handful of us in the UK that are certified and I know it's the only social media training com uh, program in the world that actually incorporates neuro coaching into right. it. So, yeah. It's this. So it's a completely uh, unique offering. Yeah. Mm. But the, the system of neuro coaching is so important. And I, 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 I really, you know, 25 up until 25 years ago, we still thought the brain, you know, as a as a as in the scientific world, thought that the brain pretty much stopped evolving. Like you couldn't yes, change yes. the way you thought, and yeah. and and we we know that's not true scientifically. I mean, what I'm saying is there were, there were people who believed you could change. You know, Napoleon Hill wrote "Think and Grow Rich," and mm. Wallace Waddles wrote um, "The Science of Getting Rich," and they were they wrote these books a hundred years ago before there was scientific evidence that we could mm -hmm. change our circumstances by changing our thinking. Um, but that power, there's so much power in in seeing you know seeing you know noticing what you're noticing, mm. being able to observe your thoughts, metacognition, being able to kind of come out of your head, see what you're thinking. And then trying to understand, is this truth? Is this fact? And, you know, what would be a more uh, empowering thought versus a disempowering thought? How can I have a more expanded viewpoint versus a more contracted viewpoint? And one of the things that we said about this job uh, is, and this is what I say to everybody, you know, the perfect job is out there. You just haven't found it yet. You just haven't found it yet. And then you did. I did. And, and on the, on the the brain they 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 say that as an older brain you haven't got the capacity to learn and that's Which just not true, true. because there's so many of us in the community that are that that much older and it's just incredible what can be done if you know and are willing to as you always say put in the work yeah absolutely well i i have yet to see anyone in our community who's not put in the work not get results Mm. Yeah. You put in the work, you get the results. You do the work, and you get the results. And it's, it's a lifetime's work. It's something yes. that I feel I am going to commit myself to because it's an investment in me. Yeah. So well, trans, why would I, I do saying, it? Last week I was saying transformation is not Amazon Prime. <laughs> no, no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It is not. Um, so, but yeah, it also so having, doesn't take a tremendous amount of time, like the brain priming that we do and the vision statements that we do, you know, once you've got them written, once you've got, then you start listening to them or looking at them on your vision board every day. It, that's, you know, that's your five to 10 minutes every day. Mm -hmm. Once you've established the vision and once you've, you know, then there's things you have to do in addition to that. But what we say is at the very least, if you're focusing on the vision and you're, you're doing the brain prime, you know, you're, you're really sort of, the ants will come up, automatic negative thoughts will come up as you lean into your vision. So you do a brain prime to sort of combat the ants, mm -hmm. right? To squash the ants. And so when you're doing your vision statement and your brain prime, and they're sort of working together every day, you naturally start to want to take steps towards it. And you start to make decisions around, you know, once your subconscious sort of knows what you're trying to do, it then uh, directs you in the way that you should go, which is such an incredible tool. Yeah, and then yes. every time you achieve, it gives you the spur to carry on. Well, um, and that's why I love Fridays at Tech Pixies because we always have a, a wins post on Fridays, you know, Friday wins. And uh, I love, love, love. It's my favorite thread of the week, you know, getting to catch up with everybody, what they've been working on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, no matter what the win is, big or small, what, what might seem small to one person is huge to someone else. And what might seem big to somebody, you know, might be small to someone else. The point is it doesn't matter because we're not, you know, we're comparing ourselves to ourselves, not to everyone else. And I always say, don't, you know, don't compare your backstage to someone else's yeah, front yeah. stage. It's, it's about celebrating other people's wins as well and knowing what's possible. And by you coming on today and telling your story of trusting the process, leaning into your vision, 
not giving up on this dream job. And then, you know, here it is, it's there. You're going to start this dream job. That's going to inspire someone else to realize that it's possible for them. Yeah. Yeah. I really hope that, that women can see that just believing and having a, a plan, not even knowing exactly where you're going to, going to go or how you're going to get there, just having that end point, um, yeah, is, is just incredible. Yeah, and it's proof that you can get your dream job no matter your age, yes. no matter your ethnic diversity, right? And um, we, you know, I'm so grateful to have your story, but I'm also just grateful that you're in the community because you've been a wonderful addition to the community. I just, I feel so blessed. I get surrounded by all these incredibly <laughs> talented women who have beautiful ambition and, you know, want to be in a supportive environment that, that helps them get there. Do you have any last thoughts, of uh, words of wisdom you'd like to impart on our incredible uh, <laughs> listeners or viewers? Not not words of wisdom, I don't think, but the but to look at um, my path and then know that you can do that for yourself. You just need to know the end point, but you do need support from others. Uh, no yeah. matter how hard you work, I believe you need others, and it does take others to elevate you to that position. Well, and that's the definition of Ubuntu, right? Which is my favorite word uh, from uh, Desmond Tutu, which is people are people because of other people. That's and so we, true. yeah, we do. We really do need each other. And we're not meant to do this thing alone. Ah, oh, Ruby, thank you so much. I know you've taken time out of um, your time to be with us. Thank you so much. I so appreciate it. Uh, and thank you for sharing your story. And um, thank you for having me on the podcast. Good luck with the dream job. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joy. Bye for okay. now.